What's the best setup for doing architecture design with Blender? I got my little helper over here who's gonna help me test things out. Right, Danny? What? We will look at an NVIDIA Studio laptop, Acer Concept D7 with an RTX 2080 and compare it to an ultra portable 3-in-1 and a desktop computer with 48 cores. We will test rendering with cycles and EV, viewport performance and compare other important factors like portability. So which machine do you think performs best? Hi. Hope you're all doing all right, staying positive, NVIDIA reached out to me to test out an NVIDIA Studio laptop. My bottleneck in my process is representation, images and videos that represent conceptual design ideas in an enticing, engaging and meaningful visual way. Good visuals, even if they steer well away from photorealism, need to be well composed, lit and rendered. The process takes time and lots of trial and error. The faster the rendering process, the quicker we can iterate and focus on improving design. So my current setup consists of two machines, something light that I can carry with me everywhere and a desktop workstation that has enough power to render quickly. I built this machine specifically for rendering on CPU since at that time, the cost of buying used Xeon processors was cheaper than dual GTX 1080 Ti cards. The trouble with using two computers actively all the time is that I try my best to save everything to the cloud on OneDrive, but the file size is for <laughs> So I need the portability of having a laptop and I need the power to be able to render and model complex designs. If there is a machine that can achieve both of those things, I'm all for it. Let's get down to the tests. So I will not be performing any standard benchmarking tests or standard Blender benchmarking scenes as they don't really mean much to architecture design workflows. Instead, I've picked a few scenes that I've worked on over the years that should give a good insight. They are theater, a large urban scene that I 3D modeled completely, so not with textures representing windows and so on. A small house with grass particles and heavy trees. My favorite bread and butter, conceptual towers. I love them, can design one every new day. And of course, we we'll probably need a few interior scenes. So let's talk about the theater. This started as a... Mm -hmm. <laughs> the project consists of a community theater, community space for yoga and workshops with plenty of shared co-working space and a rooftop restaurants. The visual style isn't quite realism, it's much more stylized look like a wooden scale model. But let's see how long it takes to render. So this scene is significantly better on the GPU. On the Acer Concept B7, it took 1 minute and 5 seconds. On the desktop with the 48 cores, it took 4 minutes and 25 seconds. That's a big difference, that's a big jump. So actually for conceptual architecture, it makes a massive difference. It's still rendering on the Inspiron 2-in-1 and it's gonna take about 34 minutes. I'm gonna stop. So these are the secondary results where we're rendering on the CPU, on the Concept D and on the GPU, which is a GTX 1070 on the desktop computer. So the CPU on the Concept D7, it's 12 cores, it's still pretty good, but it's gonna take about 15, 16 minutes to complete. The GPU though, that's, that's a nice surprise, but it's still amazing how much quicker the RTX 2080 is. So the GTX 1070 took three minutes on the, on the desktop, took one minute on the RTX 2080 on the laptop. Now, I'm not even gonna bother with that. It's nice, it's pretty, but not for rendering. This, th this brand is better than my 48 core CPU. I wish I could rebuild that again. I, which computer do you like best? The white one or the black one or the big one or the gray one? The piano one. <laughs> so the next scene is an urban scene. And this was used as a test to see how far we can take tessellation with tissue, which is probably the best add-on there for Blender. In case you haven't tried it, try it. I have a couple of videos and even a playlist explaining how it works. With big urban scenes, when we're doing architectural design, for example, like master planning or even a small project within a zone, the process is a little bit different than what many people are used to seeing in terms of really beautiful atmospheric 
super nice urban scenes produced in Blender. Those are usually quite cinematic and quite artistic. They give you a mood of a town or so. They mostly use textures and all kinds of effects and effects. That's nice for representing a mood, but in terms of representing design, they don't really work well. So within architecture and design, we always need to tweet a model and we start with a module and then we sort of build up our buildings and then our cities. So let's see how this scene does. On the concept D7 with the RTX 2080, it took 58 seconds to render. On the CPU with the 48 cores, the desktop, it took one minute and 42 seconds to render and believe it or not I even let it finish on this and this scene took 8 minutes and 49 seconds to render concept d7 cpu took 4 minutes and 45 seconds desktop gtx 1070 gpu took 2 minutes and 13 seconds Do you guys have a project that you love but you can't seem to finish? I'm still not finished with the project but I thought it may be nice to display it here as I know many people use Blender to produce similar scenes and much much better than that. Let's test out this scene. It has scattered grass and some really nice high quality trees produced with the Grove plugin. So this scene is pretty insane. The difference between the CPU 48 cores and the GPU is huge the scene consists of 500 samples 1920 by 1080 on the concept d7 gpu rtx 2080 it took 7 minutes and 29 seconds on the 48 course it took 1 hour and 47 minutes that's insane i decided to do a few more tests just to see how much we can push this with good boundaries so i did a test with 1500 samples on the rtx 2080 and that took 12 minutes and 46 seconds and then i tried with e cycles with 2000 samples and that took 14 minutes ah, getting to my favorite so conceptual towers i love doing concept that oh my script just went all so I love doing concerts that flow up in the context that grow, lift and inspire when a new vision is possible with new construction methods and design tools. At like one second before my family, which just went to the other room, comes back. But in the concept D7, it, this scene rendered in 2 minutes and 42 seconds. On the 48 cores, it's still rendering. It already took 3 minutes, so it looks like it's going to take about 7 minutes. On the Inspiron, it's going to take 1 hour. Again, same settings everywhere, they're all using denoising, this one uses AI denoising, which means that technically if it's using AI denoising, we could probably take the sample rate down even lower. Let's check out this last type of scenes now. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't do much interiors and I'm by no means that good at doing them. And I find them quite challenging, but they would probably be useful for some of you as I imagine you do similar scenes. Rendering with RTX 2080 on the Concept D7 took 5 minutes and 23 seconds. With the 48 cores on the CPU desktop machine, it took 29 minutes. However, even though I was using the same amount of samples for both scenes, the two results are not comparable because the AI denoiser in the RTX machine does a much much better job of denoising. We would need to up the sample rate significantly higher on the CPU to get a comparable result. I also did a third result with 1500 samples on the RTX and that took 15 minutes and 23 seconds and that's already starting to look quite usable and as a bonus here's the scene at the moment in EV and it also performs pretty well surprisingly well actually so let's talk about Nvidia Studio Nvidia Studio is a platform aimed squarely at you and me and other creators that need top of the line hardware. As part of the creator platform, Nvidia releases a studio driver that gets tested with 3D software like Blender, CAD, graphics and video editing software. Nvidia works with manufacturers to build machines specifically for creatives, with stranger hardware and software requirements 
and testing with the usual software suspects. These systems get an RTX Studio badge, allowing you and me to easily identify the systems that are most useful for us. As you imagine, the Acer Concept D7 laptop is an NVIDIA Studio certified laptop machine with an RTX 2080 i7 9750H, 15-inch 4K display, 32 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte hard drive. It's a pretty sweet machine, but I'm surprised how quietly it runs with doing less intensive tasks. I can barely hear it now. Can you hear it? The lights make a bit of sound, but this, this is definitely quieter. So I also like the trend of really powerful laptops looking more and more streamlined. Razer is still best in class in terms of design, but I'm really happy that other manufacturers are breaking out of the gaming mode as it doesn't look very professional to have blue LEDs and aliens when talking to a client. And this white laptop, I think it's a pretty good direction. RTX cars, I would actually call them a necessity for any serious blender work. I'll probably be investing in an RTX GPU for my desktop. There are some limitations that you need to be aware of. Onboard memory for 2080s is limited to 8 gigabytes and 2080 Ti is 11 gigabytes. For large and complex scenes with many trees, buildings, details, high res textures, your scene may end up being larger than 11 gigabytes. In the case that the GPU runs out of memory, Blender will automatically try to use system and GPU memory. This has a performance impact, but is still faster than using solely CPU rendering. In addition, there are also other GPU options with more memory available. A Quadro RTX 5000 has 16 gigabytes of frame buffer, but it is more expensive. Also, there's the upcoming Asus Pro Art Studio Book One with 24 gigabytes of Quadro RTX 6000. This has just recently been announced, and it may cost as much as a small used car, but it will be a game changer for users with more demanding rendering needs. The other thing to note is that not all Psycho's features work with optics yet. For example, if you use ambient occlusion or bevel shader nodes, your scene will not want to render with optics. I had to go back and adjust a few materials on the way to get this to work properly on all the scenes we demoed earlier. But as the integration matures further, hopefully all the Psycho's features get incorporated with the optics SDK. The Acer Concept D seems to be a great blend of power, portability, and it's really well suited for architectural design work, especially with Blender. I can even see this being the only machine I need for both on the road and at home. The price is high, but it's cheaper than having two computers, and when buying a new computer, it's always important to think about the intended use. The time it takes to set up a rendering or an animation scene needs to be considered when buying new hardware. So if you're doing some professional work or aspiring to be doing professional work, then I would recommend buying the best that you can buy for your budget. Bottom line is that RTX GPUs clearly give the optimal results. Thank you again NVIDIA and Scan UK for sponsoring this video for letting me play with this nice laptop. So thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't like it. Let me know in the comments which machine you're using and which machine you're thinking of upgrading to. Always interested to hear what everybody else is using in terms of hardware. See you later guys.